Hey guys, happy Monday. So you're probably going to see me on a few times today. I have quite a few words that the Lord is having me release. I'm not sure in what order, but even last night, I told you guys the night before I had like seven dreams. Uh, last night, I not only recorded dreams, but I also um, typed out what God was speaking to me in the wee hours of this morning. So I'm just going to let him flow as far as how he wants them to be released today. Um, and we're just going to go with it because the Lord has a lot to say. And uh, 2024, I can definitely see the expansion when it comes to uh, my calling and my purpose and what God is calling me to do. Like there's definitely been a spiritual promotion and giftings and so forth. So even that's for someone, if God is calling you to get on a platform, doesn't have to be YouTube, doesn't have to be anything online, but if he's calling you to start a Bible study group at home or to minister in the streets to people or to volunteer and just speak his word, whatever he's calling you to do, make sure you're being obedient to his voice because obedience is better than sacrifice. You can fast and try to do all the things all day, but none of it matters if you're not doing what he's actually calling you to do. So that's for someone. Um, but the Lord spoke to me in the wee hours of this morning and I'm pulling up my phone because I, I write notes like when he speaks to me in the wee hours of the morning, I type it on my phone. Um, but he said to me, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. Even in that, God will send will send you people to ease the pain. Okay, so I heard him say, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. Even in that, God will send you people to ease the pain. So one of the great things about God is that he's merciful and he gives grace, right? He's a gracious God and he's merciful. He's also a just God. So just because he he's gracious and merciful does not mean people that choose to partake in evil get away with it because they don't. God is still a just God. But I heard him say, I'm going to read this one more time. When you choose to partake in, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. Even in that, God will send people to ease your pain. Many of you guys have been called to be that vessel that God has sent to ease the pain of another. Okay. Um, and there will come a point where God is not going to send anybody to ease their pain, right? Of those that choose to do evil, to walk in the ways of the world, to idolize the world and things over God. All of that's a form of evil. Evil does not necessarily mean the person sitting there doing witchcraft. Manipulation is witchcraft. That's what scripture says. Um, so it doesn't mean that the person is sitting there um, trying to put witchcraft on another on another person or, you know, killing people. No, there's so many different forms of evil. Not following God and walking according to his will and choosing to walk according to your own fleshly desires and man's desires and all of those things, that's considered a form of evil. You're not in obedience with God. And if he's uh, righteous and pure in every way and you're not connected to him, you're none of those things. We're none of those things without him. We're not righteous on our own. We're not made pure and holy and sanctified and set apart on our own. That all includes being connected to God. But there's many people that for 2024, they're going to be in the waiting room. And I don't know if you guys remember, I'm going to try to go back and find that word. Um, the Lord has me going back to a lot of words that he previously had me release. And even though these words were a then word, they're also a now word because it's still continuing and it's actually getting more significant for 2024. But um, many prodigals, and I'm not talking about just your, uh, your husband you're standing for or your wife, a prodigal is anybody that choose to exhibit wasteful living outside of the will of God, meaning they choose the world and possessions and to follow their flesh over following God's will. That's a prodigal when you choose to just walk out of alignment with God. Okay. And you choose to exhibit wasteful living. If God is not included in the way you live, you're exhibiting wasteful living. Okay. And you're idolizing the world. You're idolizing your, your fleshly desires. And with idolatry comes destruction. So what the Lord um, gave me in a dream, and I believe this was in 2022, 
uh, he gave me a dream and I saw my ex-husband in the waiting room of a healthcare facility. It was like a hospital or urgent care. You guys probably hear my niece, Delilah. She's watching Miss Rachel. So that's why I'm in the room giving this word. Uh, <laughs> uh, but in the dream, this girl, she is singing along and jumping with Miss Rachel. And you guys, even in that, I have to release a word that the Lord gave me from watching Miss Rachel with my niece. I wasn't even watching Miss Rachel. I was listening to what Miss Rachel was saying and God gave me a whole word from Miss Rachel. Okay? So God will use anything, but let me try to stay on track. So in the dream, I was in the urgent care with my ex-husband and he was telling me how his uh ex-wife who is the the woman he married after me he's divorced now from her that was a failed takeoff exactly like god had spoken not going to get into that um but in the dream he was telling me she had like uh poisoned him like made food for him and it was like the the food was tainted right it was it made them sick that's a whole word but i'm going to link that word in the description box of this word but he was saying, you know, she had made food and the food was tainted or whatnot. And so he ended up in the hospital and we were at like this urgent care hospital place. Right. And he wrote his name on the list and his name was first on the list. And he handed it to the lady at the front desk and he thought he was about to be seen right away. But then she had him like write his name again on the, the waiting list. And he was the last one on the list. So he thought he was about to be seen and um, get treatment by a doctor so he could feel better, but he was sadly mistaken, right? He couldn't use his looks and charm to get him to be seen first. He was literally last on this list, and this list was very, very long, right? And I won't get too much into the dream, but when I woke up for, from the dream, the Lord told me when he finally decides to come to the Lord and wants to walk in the ways of the Lord, he's going to be at a moment where the pain is severe. He needs to be treated by the Lord. God is the great physician. So he's our healer, right? And the Lord was telling me, he's going to have to wait. He's The Lord was saying, I'm going to make him wait just like he made me wait in order for him to walk in my will. He said, I had to wait for him. So he's going to wait for me. And if you know, when you're sick and you're in the waiting room, that is like such a crucial moment. You are bent over. If you've ever went to the urgent care of the hospital, because I have several times, um, and it was normally like back in the day because I had like severe headaches, right? Tension headaches. And I just wanted to see a doctor because I wanted them to figure out what's wrong and to prescribe me something because I needed this pain to ease, right? And the Lord was saying, he's gonna have to wait. And a lot of people have died in the waiting room right? They've died in the waiting room waiting for their turn, right? Because the doctor called them back too late, right? The doctor called them back there too late. And the Lord wasn't saying he's going to die. But in this moment, he will die to self as he's waiting in this waiting room, because God will bring you down to size to where you know, you have no choice but to call on him for help and for assistance, right? You have no choice. And many prodigals for 2024 are in that waiting room. They're not about to be in that waiting room. Many are in that waiting room right now. Many are going into that waiting room and they think they're just going to be seen like God is just going to fix it. He's going to make them feel better. He's going to make it right. But no, the Lord is saying the same way they made him wait, he's going to have them wait. And while you're in the waiting room, you're not just sitting there chilling, you're in pain. And I remember even in the dream saying, wow, he's going to be waiting a long time. He was literally the last one on the list. But that is not a dream just for him. That is for many prodigals. And again, people that choose to exhibit wasteful living outside of the will of God. And when the Lord spoke to me in the wee hours of last night, he said, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. Okay, guys, torment. The definition of torment means severe physical or mental suffering to cause to experience severe physical or mental suffering. It's uh, torture is another word for it. Plague is another word for it. Crucify, to mortify, to worry, to trouble, to mistreat is another word for it. But it's severe physical and mental suffering. Severe, let's look up the definition of severe. Severe means something bad, 
or undesirable to a very great or intense extent. Harsh, hard, okay? Freezing, icy, which that's a whole word because it's snowing today in Texas, okay? So the Lord is speaking loud and clear when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil, the same evil torments you. Even in that, God will send you people to ease the pain. And I was asking God, uh, the first uh, set of verses he gave me was when um, Saul, the Lord sent evil spirits to what? Torment Saul. And Saul called on David to play the harp for him in order to ease those, those um, spirits off of him in order to ease the pain. So the Lord will allow his vessels to step in place, which is why many of you are in position and you just feel like your, your prayers are unheard or it's taking so long. No, the Lord has many of you in position because what a lot of people are about to go through, and this is not just for um, people that are standing for husbands or wives, but other people are standing for family members, for their mothers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters to come to salvation. And God is going to use you as his vessel to help ease the pain during these tormenting times. Okay. Um, I opened my Bible and I was asking God before I opened my Bible, I said, just give me a set of scriptures for this word. He had already gave me the story of David and Saul um, when he gave me this word in the wee hours of this morning, but I wanted more. And I said, Lord, when I opened my Bible, I said, just give me something, whatever you want me to, um, to read, right? For this word, I said, and I'll know what word you're telling me to release. So I opened my Bible to Psalms uh, 34, and I'm going to read verse 15 to 22. It says, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call on him for help. His people. He rescues them from all their troubles. Not some, but all their troubles. We're in good hands. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. But calamity, meaning disaster, tragedy, misfortune, calamity will surely destroy the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. Not one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. To be condemned means to be sentenced to punishment, especially death, doom, loss, or ruin. He says, not one of them who take refuge in, in him will be condemned. Guys, God watches his righteous children to protect the, and deliver them, but he watches the wicked in preparation for judgment. So you may think he's letting them build these high places and stay in this position, but as the Lord had me re release on a previous word, the higher they build, the harder they fall, right? Right? And he gave the analogy in a previous word, if I'm on the, fir the first floor balcony and I jump over the balcony, I'm going to land on my feet in the grass. But if I'm on the 20th floor balcony and I jump, there's no way I'm going to get up the same way. God needs them to get up a different way. So he allows them to build and build and build high, high, high. Because when they fall, that's going to be a hard fall. Something's going to break. They're going to need assistance. They're going to need help. And God will bring you to the end of yourself to where you have no choice but to call on the great physician to heal your broken bones, to heal your broken heart, to ease the pain. So don't be confused by them building up and being promoted and being put in position. Because the higher they build, the harder they fall. God needs that fall to hit hard so that they don't get up the same way. That is the whole point. They get up differently, changed, pruned, refined into who he created them to be. And I'm going to read this one more time. He said, when you partake, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. Even in that, God will send you people to ease the pain. Not to take away the pain, but to ease the pain. 
So they still have to go through whatever process the Lord is taking them through. But just like in that urgent care with my ex-husband, I was there. He wasn't there by himself. I am a righteous child of God. I'm made righteous through the Lord Jesus. I choose to follow him, to walk with him. So I was the vessel that was there in that waiting room while he had to wait. But I knew he was going to be there for a while. And it's so easy for us to be like, I'm not helping. I'm not praying. I'm not doing this. I've done it for too long. But just think. When you were out in this world, God waited for you and he redeemed you and he restored you and he purified you and he was there with you and he expects us to do the same for other people. Does that mean we're going to go through it with them? No, there's still God is a just God. So they're still going to go through this process and it won't feel good, but he let them build so that when they fall, they won't get up the same way. If I jump from the 20th floor, floor balcony, there's no way I can get up by myself. I'm going to need people to lift me up off the ground. And God will put his chosen ones in place to be there for these people. And God gets the glory out of it. Because for many of these people, God has had you prophesy to them what's going to happen. They need to change their ways. They need to do this. And they chose not to listen. So guess what? Now it's time for God to act. Because what he can't teach you by telling you, he's going to teach you by showing you. And you ain't gonna like it. So I'm also going to read uh, from 1 Samuel 16. I'm gonna start at verse 14. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. It was not from Satan, it was from the Lord. When God removes his hand off you guys, <laughs> that ain't no joke. It says, now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. So not only did it torment him, it terrified him. He was afraid. He was scared. Okay, God needs to use these tactics to come for them to come to the end of themselves and to learn that their safety is only in him. He is the shelter. Saul's servant said to him, behold, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are here before you to find a man who plays skillfully on the harp. And when the evil spirit from God is on you, he shall play the harp with his hand and you will be well. So Saul told his servants, find me a man who plays well and bring and bring him to me. One of the young men said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a brave and competent man, a warrior, discerning as imprudent, eloquent in speech and a handsome man. And the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me David, your son, who is with the flock. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a jug of wine and a young goat and sent them to Saul with David, his son. Then David came to Saul and attended him. Saul loved greatly. Saul loved him greatly. <laughs> Catch that, guys. Saul loved him greatly. And later David became his armor bearer. God will have you stand in place as a vessel to help ease the pain of this person. And even in the midst of that, they begin to love you greatly. Their love increases for you because y'all better catch this word. I'm gonna keep reading. Saul sent word to Jesse saying, please let David be my attendant for he has found favor in my sight. Sometimes y'all don't realize why God is having you stand in the gap. Yes, it's to ease the pain and to help bring them to salvation. But in the midst of that, you find favor with the other person. Their love increases for you. God is the only person capable of changing a person's heart. Yeah, catch that. So it came about whenever the evil spirit from God was on Saul, David took a harp and played it with his hand. So Saul would be refreshed and be well and the evil spirit would leave him. So he would be refreshed and be well and the evil spirit would leave him. I just read 1 Samuel 16 verse 14 through 23, guys. That is the word. That is the word. Many are getting ready to go through this process and it's not the Lord that's tormenting them. Yeah, the Lord is sending the evil spirit to do its job, but it's because they chose evil. 
So just like the Lord said in the wee hours of this morning, when you choose to partake in evil, the same evil torments you. God just doesn't send an evil spirit to anybody to torment anybody. Your actions do that. Your choices do that. And the Lord said, even in that, God will send you people to ease the pain. So many of you, if you are being called to, to be a vessel to help ease the pain, steward it well. Don't let your pride get in the way and start talking about what you've already done and so forth. So what? You were once in these streets. You were once um, choosing the world over God. You were once a part of whoredom, giving your body to the world instead of to the one true God. We've all went through it. So the same grace and mercy God has showed you, show to other people. It doesn't mean you're giving them excuses because either way, they're about to feel this fall. And they will not get up the same way. They're still going to have to go through this process and they need it. So it's not you making excuses, but if God is calling you to stand in the gap, it's so he can get the glory, but you also have a benefit in it. Because David went and was obedient and chose to show, show Saul grace and mercy, Saul loved him greatly in an abundance and favored him and wanted him there as one of his y'all better catch that. Cause I'm not even going to elaborate on that further. Cause if you have ears to hear, you've already caught it, but that is the word guys. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll be on here a few more times today, just depending on how the Lord has me release these words and how many or whatever I'm here for it. I'm inside today. Y'all, like I said, it's uh snowing lightly outside, uh, icy outside. It is a uh, 27 degrees right now. Okay. Um, but that is the word guys. Uh, I love you and happy Martin Luther King day. <laughs> I don't know who out in this, having a parade today in this cold weather, but if y'all are out celebrating, stay warm. If you're in a cold place, I am in this house today with my niece. Just made me a, another cup of coffee. Okay. With some shots of espresso. And I'm about to sit here, excuse me, and just enjoy the Monday. Um, but I love you guys. And yeah, take heed to this word, sit with God on this word and take me to God. But yeah, that's the word, y'all. Love you. Bye.